Greg Blanchett is a volunteer firefighter from Harper, Kansas with over 30 years of on-ground firefighting experience. Greg owns and operates Blanchett Manufacturing, a company that for over 25 years has built and sold trucks all over the United States and Canada. When it comes to fighting fine fuel fires, Greg, along with thousands of other firefighters, does not see eye to eye with the NFPA. Most of these departments have chosen to ignore the NFPA standards and to develop their own protocol for riding on the exterior as a necessity to knock down a fast moving fine fuel fire in high winds with limited manpower and water. With Greg's leadership, these firefighters have been given a voice and NFPA 1906 has recently adopted an onboard pump and roll firefighting position behind the cab which must comply with SAE J1194 for rollover protection. This exterior fire attack position allows firefighters in fine fuel regions to ride behind the cab inside of a safe, protected area during on-scene operations. Greg, in short, how important to firefighters is the ability to utilize an exterior fire attack area to flank a fast-moving fine fuel fire? Extremely. It's really not a choice, it's a necessity. Can you go into detail? It's a necessity because you cannot catch a fast moving fine fuel fire. And if you're walking that fire, there is no way you're going to catch that fire. Explain the difference in a fine fuel region, and a mountainous region, or a heavily wooded area. Very simple. The wind. I understand that wind is a concern in the fine fuel areas. However, there is just as much wind in the mountainous areas and the heavily wooded areas. Yes, there is wind, but think about it. You can have a 20 mile an hour wind, 30 mile an hour wind, whatever. As soon as it hits that wooded area, those trees, the wind stops and goes over the top of it. Down at the base of that fire, there's no wind. That fire can be moving one, five, 10 mile an hour because it's being driven by that wind just as soon as it hits those trees. In fact, right before it hits the wooded area, that fire will decrease and finally when it gets into that wooded area, it goes down to a crawl. Now we have the time to flank the fire. Our tactics change. Now we can get on the ground and we can flank that fire. I understand that it's very important, very critical. Can you give a greater example? I would say over 90% of fire departments use this exterior position. The only ones that I have found that do not use this positions are the full-time fire departments. Why? Because the insurance basically. The protocol is because of insurance. For your insurance to be good, you have to follow an FPA. The volunteers on the other hand we don't have the insurance and stuff, plus we don't have the manpower, we don't have the physical shape, we don't have the age, uh, but we have the equipment. With safety being the utmost concern, is a firefighter behind the cab safer than a firefighter walking the fire line? Absolutely no comparison. A firefighter on this truck in a fire attack position is much safer than a firefighter walking alongside a truck. I understand they're safer to be on the truck. Go into greater detail. First off, a firefighter walking alongside of a truck. Heat exhaustion, exertion. Plus, I am breathing so much heavier, so I'm inhaling more because I'm working harder. Another key issue is heat stress and heart attacks. Our firefighters in the volunteer region around here the average age in this area in this, right now, I would say in the Kansas area, and probably Oklahoma too, is in the low 50s. I joined this department over 31 years ago. Right now, I'm turning 58 in a couple days. My physical stamina isn't nothing like it was 31 years ago. And you're gonna argue, why is the age so high. Our problem with recruiting new firefighters, if we get one before he's married and before he has kids, we can usually get him till he will stay with us. 
if we get one that has a young family and he joins up, usually it lasts six months to a year. They doesn't even make it through their training. This person has to take care of his family. He's got his job, he's got his kids, school functions, church functions, and the economics today, both parents have to work. He has to do training during the weekend to get your certification as firefighter one, so on and so forth. Otherwise, he's not safe. After about six months, pretty soon the wife is gonna say, honey, which more important, the fire department or your family? Make a choice. Can you give a list of examples of how the firefighter is protected by being on the back of the truck? What if the truck rolls over? If I'm standing alongside this truck and this truck rolls over, I'm in the path of the roller. Luckily, maybe the truck will roll the other direction. Then it won't be as bad. Impact. I'm standing here and there's an impact of another truck. Brush flying up. The tire hits a stick, swings up and hits him. He trips, gets tangled up in his hose. He gets drugged if he's walking. I'll give you an example. One time I was walking alongside a truck. The truck ran over a limb, which I did not see, and the limb swung up right between my legs. It dropped me to my knees. I didn't trip, it just dropped me. It's funny now, but at the time it wasn't very funny. Can you give further examples? The driver knows at all times where his firefighter is when he's behind this truck. And he can concentrate on his driving ability and what's happening around him rather than trying to concentrate on where that firefighter is. Another real key point is communication. I can communicate with that driver because I'm right behind him. If I'm in the other opposite side, the passenger side, my communication is still clear going through the side window or going through a back window. The emergency exit if the firefighter all of a sudden, we all of a sudden, it changes, he can leave. If I'm walking, I've got to get on this truck and get my equipment loaded up. It takes time. I mean, there is nothing safe about walking alongside of a truck. I understand. Can you give another example? I'll give you a good example. Over 90% of the volunteer fire departments or fire departments in general, they don't have to be a volunteer, ride their truck. And the other 10% don't because of the insurance issue. I was talking to an officer of one of those 10% that have to walk their fire lines. I go, what do you do when you have a fast moving fire like this? And he goes, oh, that taboo. And I go, what? And he goes, look, the first thing we do is call in the fire departments that ride their truck. I said, what if they don't respond in time? He goes, there's times you've got to look to the other direction. He goes, I as an officer have to look the other direction. And I said, but you don't have the fire attack position to do this. And he goes, but I have to look out for the safety of my firefighters because if they're on the ground walking this, even if they're not making any headways on there and then all of a sudden, the other fire departments that are driving their trucks and riding their trucks in the exterior position, he goes, these guys are at risk. We got to get them off the ground. He said, on a safety issue, we have to look the other way. Can a firefighter behind the cab be just as protected as the firefighter inside the cab? Absolutely. I had a fire chief come to me and say, it is not as safe to fight fire inside the cab as it is in the exterior. What did he mean it was safer to be in the exterior fire attack position than it was to be inside the cab of the truck? You don't realize it, but the firefighter in the fire attack position is fire command. He sees what's going on around him. He's got a 360 degree view of what's happening around him. There's a truck over here. What's the fire doing behind me? Is it flaming up behind me? What's happening in the head fire? What is going on around me? I know what's going on. You're directing that driver of hazards. You're directing where we need to go, back up, go forward, so we can change tactics at a moment's notice. It's more important for that 
exterior fire attack position to have that view than it is to fight the fire. The necessity is the fire command. He's fire command on that truck. He's got to have that view. Secondary is fight the fire because he has to keep that truck in a safe location. Has the risk of death or serious injury to the firefighter been researched and addressed in this type of firefighting? Yes, extensively. In 25 years, there has not been one recorded incident of death in the attack position behind the cab or serious injury. I couldn't find that either. But there has been death from riding on the front of a truck, riding behind the truck on a tailboard, riding on top of a truck. But behind the cab, there is no recorded incidents. Now walking, I'll give you an example of one fire department in 20 years lost two firefighters in two separate incidents. One of them was heat exhaustion. The other one, they was responding to a ditch fire. He stepped onto a power line, which electrocuted him. That's what caused the ditch fire. There was another electrocution in California stepping onto a power line which caused that fire too. Greg, is Blanchett Manufacturing the only manufacturer that produces the exterior fire attack position? No, absolutely not. Uh, I'll give you an example. Texas A&M Fire Show. That's a fine fuel area and it concentrates towards the fine fuel firefighters. Over 30 manufacturers was at this show, building the exterior fire attack position. My company builds over 40 trucks a year on this. Cut it in half. There's 30 manufacturers and they're building 20. We're building 20 a year. 20 times 30 is over 500 trucks. It's 600, but let's call it 500 trucks. In a 10 year span, that's 5,000 trucks. Now remember, I found no deaths or serious injury behind the cap fire attack position. So there's 5,000 examples out here, but nothing has happened yet. But I'm gonna tell you, there almost was. Back in Texas, and it's recorded, I'll rec the video where it shows a truck backing up alongside of a railroad, and he rolled over. It was a very slow rollover. There was three people on this truck. One in the back, one in the middle, on the passenger side and then the driver. It rolls over on the driver's side. There was two injuries. The driver broke his arm. The guy riding on the back had a leg injury. The guy riding on the center was not injured. Notice how bad this area was crushed in against the tank. If he happened to be on the driver's side, there would have been a death in this accident or serious injury. What if he happened to be walking alongside that truck? NFPA 1906 has now addressed this problem. We got a standard in here to eliminate that from happening. Does NFPA 1500 recognize any other location on the exterior of a fire truck while it is in motion? Yes, two. One is loading a hose. You know, we're backing up and we're up on top of that truck loading our hose. You talk about a dangerous place why a truck is moving is on top of a fire truck. And the second provision? Tiller. When you're training a tiller operator, you can be riding on the side of that tiller explaining how to drive the tiller. So basically, loading a hose, you can be backing up, and the tiller. You've explained the two provisions. Why isn't there a third provision for the exterior fire attack position? Very simple. Representation. The fine fuel firefighter was not represented when this was first written. Loading hose and running a tiller is no concern of the fine fuel firefighters. But in large cities, what were very re well represented have that issue. So that's the reason it is in here today. Simply put, Greg, what can the NFPA 1500 committee do to assist these firefighters in protecting themselves their families and their communities. Man, this is about as simple as it gets. Recognize 1906, the fire attack position. It's there, the standard is there. We have an area in which to ride that's well protected. 1500, 
you have to recognize 1906 for in order for this to work for us. Please do not let this hard work go in vain. We need this position. I appreciate your time and I understand the time you're putting forth in here. Do the research and look at the evidence. It's there. It's very clear cut. Again, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity.